everybody doing well today? We are all repeat the Lord's prayer together and we'll get started. <clears throat> we left off <clears throat> in first Peter. Yeah, you mean somebody. Mm -hmm. Was it three? Sixteen. Yeah, I, I wrote down sixteen. I wrote down. Nine. It, was, it was. He did sixteen. I thought. Yeah. 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 It was somewhere around fifteen, yeah. sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Uh, we we'll start with. Mm -hmm. that's what, that's what we, we got bogged down we, we was talking about that slavery yeah yeah right yeah. Master, yeah yeah we got we got in, in, into talking about slavery and yeah i did i did i got kind of hit myself all bogged down and I, I wanted to discuss that slavery thing and that's it. yeah because it, it really it really did get me when you it, it will. It'll mess with you. Boy, you think about it. Yeah, it will do it. When you think about we can't imagine. We can't imagine. Lord knows to do. Sister Grill compared to you, you got a different generation. And even, I think I got Sister Grill about one or two days. One or two days. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a generation there. Right. You know, and like I said, when we talk about what mama and dad and them, Deacon Sam and them went through, oh, have mercy. <laughs> and you, did you ever teach on it? I do it all the time. See, and I wanted to get I wanted to get there so to give her right. the floor to do it because her teaching it. We experiencing it. Y'all probably picked up the tail end of it, but they never really heard of it or experienced it. And nowadays they don't they don't even want you to talk about it in school. So it is something serious. Let us all repeat the Lord's prayer and we'll get started. Ain't nobody gonna get mad, but the devil. <laughs> the truth is the light. Amen. Mm -hmm. You you can't go forward unless you know where you came from. Let us all repeat the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, Father which are Father, in heaven, Father, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will, will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 As we stated, uh, verses, First Timothy, First Timothy, the second chapter, uh, verses 11 through 17, it deals with live as servants of God. Uh, we as Christian, we're supposed to live as servants, not always want to be the boss. Even if you're in charge, we got to remember we are God's children. And like I said, don't nobody want to serve, everybody want to be in charge, but we're supposed to live as servants of God. Verse 15 says, For so is the will of God that with well doing. So God wants us to do what's right, He wants us to do well. 
with well doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. People will talk about you the way you live, your Christian, so forth and so on. Uh, but we are supposed to live according to the life that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would, would, would want us to. We're supposed to follow his pattern, even when he was uh, talked about, beat and scorned, never said a mom the word. We'll pick up. Some say it's 15, some say it's 16, <laughs> somewhere in between. Yeah, we have the bag up, we'll, we'll, we'll rewind it, put it in reverse. Verse 16, 17. Verses 18, let me put it this way, verse 18 through 25, which is the end of that chapter, it says that the example of Christ's suffering is the way Christians ought to live. We ought to pattern ourselves by Christ's suffering. Whatever Christ went through, we shouldn't be surprised that we got to go through it too. Somebody say amen. amen. That's verses 18 through 25, and we'll get there. Verse 16, 17, and 18. As free and not using your liberty for choke, malice, but as the servants of God, honor all men. Love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And 18 servants, be subject to your masters. With all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the poor. Mm -hmm. 19, 20, and 21. So, if a man for what for Verse 22, 23, and 24. <laughs> you good, you good, you good, go ahead, go ahead, D. Revive. Revile not. Threaten. He threatened us. Threaten up. But okay. Righteousness. Righteousness. Well, when I saw that one, I... You know, you know, read it, done read it several times before, but I, I like that bishop, bishop of my soul. Boy, that's, that's, that's my powerful right there. That's my powerful. Chapter three, chapter three, uh, verses one through 12. It deals with the behavior of wives and husbands. Yeah, this is my, <laughs> we might have, <laughs> We might have to close the church if we get to this one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody. <laughs> Amen. A whole lot of folks need to be here tonight when you talk about husband and wife, how they supposed to act. They don't want to hear. They don't want to hear. Amen. Verse one, two, and three. Yeah. Yeah. 
Likewise, ye wives, be subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word, or won by the conversation of the wives. While that behold your chesty conversation coupled with fear, whose um, adoring let it not be the outward adoring of painting the painting the hair and the wearing of gold or putting on their apparel. Mm -hmm. Four, five, or six. So let it be to the true man of the heart in the which is not for of the book, even the ornament of the meek quiet spirit, which is the sight of God, the praise of Christ. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own persons. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling the Lord, whose daughter, yea, are as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any mates. Amen. Amen. Let it all say amen. 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 We started here in verse 16, where it said, live as free men. First chapter, uh, I mean, first Peter, first Peter, the second chapter, verse number 16 says, live as free men. And we should live as free. Amen. We left. We left off. We left off here. Uh, we left out of here on last weekend. And I'm. A, I'm a yield. Can we? Can we just have a little history right here? I'm a yield. I'm a yield because it was a question that was asked. I don't know if you want to ask it again. Want to? Do we want to go in public? Because I do have a history teacher. And one good thing about it, God put people in position for a particular reason. Helping somebody. Amen. It's not by chance that people are in certain places, position. We all got a calling. And we supposed to be ready to answer, man, whatever comes. That's why we come to study. That's why we learn. That's why we go to school so we can learn better. When you learn better, you can do better. Amen. And we left off. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, and slavery. Uh, this thing. When back in the slave days, of course, they didn't do everything godly like. Mm -hmm. So we were just supposed to still follow and obey those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, see, see what you're trying to say. <laughs> that, that's probably why it came up when I asked the question. Well, at this point, who is your master? Hey, Amen. That's um, today is that, a different point. That, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> um, doing doing slavery because ironically, I was just looking at a, a thing about Thomas Jefferson, mm -hmm. and Thomas Jefferson, um, depending on who you listen to, mm -hmm. he had he had an entire family that was with a black woman. Her name was Sally Hemings. And um, that, that particular family, when he passed away, that family was free. He freed them. They were his children. But as long as he was on this earth, he never freed his, his baby's mama or the children by that way. And mm -hmm. but the other people that were there, that were his, his same slaves. Now, he had these same people on the plantation. Um, they were sold to pay off the debt for the property. Now, this is the same person who wrote the Declaration of Independence. Wow. Okay. Stay right now. Is it, isn't it ironic that the one that write it can't live by? It? Always. It's always the one that makes the rule, but they can't abide by it. Go now, ahead. now, remember now, when we just read through this scripture a few moments ago, it said that the servant was to bow not only to the gentle master, but to the one that was a little hard, because at this point, you were learning 
to be humble and submissive. Mm -hmm. Because remember, you're coming from a place where we're uh, a proud people. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you look at the legacy of African history, um, African people have always been a proud, a proud nation. They've been warrior kings. I mean, a lot of time when they talk about African people, they like to say the word Egyptian or they'll say Nubian, but they'll never acknowledge the color. Mm -hmm. But um, how many people have you seen that come from the continent of Africa that don't look like the people that are in this room? So that those large kingdoms that you're talking about that have been there for centuries, mm -hmm. well, look around the room and you'll see somebody in here that looks like one of those people, but it's never acknowledged like that in scripture. But they ruled for years. So when you're coming over and um, some people were introduced to Christianity while they were in the continent, but a lot of us didn't meet Christ until we got to, to, to the United States. So if you come from a group of people who've not ever been taught to humble themselves and be submissive and servants to another, unfortunately, how do you learn how to do that if you've never been made to experience it? Now, is it right? Never was. But when Christ was beaten, when he was hung on the cross, was that right? Had he done anything to justify the action? So, I, you know, I always try to think about it like today. Would I want to now go back and live in Africa? My answer is no, hands down. He brought us to a place where through that struggle and through that suffering, we're able to really show the strength and power of our people in a way that other cultures just can't because they don't have that same experience of suffering and strife and struggle. So when you see a person like ourselves be elevated to the next level, you know it wasn't by accident. You know it wasn't by nepotism. You know it wasn't because somebody just gave it to me. It was because the Lord blessed and ordained you. So during that time when you're there with a taskmaster who's supposed to be teaching Christianity, because if you look at the history of most churches, most black churches was started by white people. Land they was were given. trying to introduce Christianity because, again, they, they, they knew it in their spirit. They knew it in their soul. I don't care what anyone tells you. At some point, it has to vex them. And that's why they really don't want this culture taught. I was explaining to somebody else that we were talking about, you know how they're trying to take all the books and stuff out of the class? Mm -hmm. Well, you do realize that, that was, these were actually events, mm -hmm. okay? So if you, were, if you were there in the 1950s, those people still exist. When these children look in the textbooks and they see those images of the white people, with the gun in people's head or with the noose around some black man's neck, that's someone's family. So now what happens is they're nervous and they're embarrassed because that's part of their heritage. Um, someone even found, remember the Little Rock Nine, the first nine black people to um, integrate the school in Arkansas? Mm -hmm. Guess who was standing outside? The, the, the owner of Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones. Yeah, yes. He was that came up here recently and and they were talking about this so i understand your conflict but the the, the purpose of, of 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 these stories that we have in the bible is to tell you that this there's nothing new under the sun it's been happening a long time and god has a message in every last one of those stories even for us today now was it wrong it was wrong then <laughs> you know, when you read through the scripture, he's not telling you because he says you're supposed to live as free men. Mm -hmm. But if you happen to find yourself in this situation, who is to deliver you? You or the one that made you? So if he has you at a place for a time and a season, that's why you're supposed to always continuously pray. Because when it's your time to leave, you need to be ready to go. But while is your time and your season to learn whatever it is in that place, I need for you to stay for a minute. It is not going to be easy. It is going to be a challenge. But the problem is some of us don't know how to just sit down and shut up. 
<laughs> Amen. Y'all talking about y'all pastors? I, well, I'm just talking about it. Some, some people do. No, we always, as you say, it's, it's too many chiefs and not enough exactly. to Everybody wants to always Everybody be in charge. Right. Well, guess what? You got to be served. The day, there's only one person that's in charge. Amen. And we don't know how to submit to people that are people. Amen. Then how is it that you're going to submit to someone else? See, when we take that word submit and the word serve, we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we like to pick and choose who it is mm -hmm. that we bow down to. Mm -hmm. If the Lord gave someone charge over you, it's because he saw someone that had something that I needed at that season. Mm -hmm. We couldn't have any of the stories of deliverance that we have if Job is not cast on his bed of affliction. Mm -hmm. That story can't be told. Mm -hmm. If we don't get on the slave ship, this country, this whole country doesn't get built because those people couldn't do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to empower yourself by learning the power that was already in you. Do not, sometimes because people don't have titles, we think that they're not worth remembering in history. But the problem is for that person that has a title, who's able to actually rule, they can't rule unless they have people that are there that are working, that are pushing, that are doing whatever needs to be done. It can't get done. And I get you don't want to be the person that was cast as a slave, but guess what? We are no longer slaves. You mean? But in a day, in, in today's society, right. they are trying to do it tricky in a different manner. They still try to hold you, but you are still free. And the only way you can recognize that is if you knew what it looked like to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can't, you know, sometimes, you know, when people are going through things, some people don't want to tell me, but because I've done, dealt with a few things, I can see some stuff you got going on. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it, it just is what it is. Sometimes when they say you have to have been through it, know it. Mm -hmm. And so when someone comes to you and you see them struggling, if you if you had to endure it, you can give them that encouragement, maybe some guidance, some assistance that they think that no one else is aware of. Because I know what human trafficking looks like because I've seen it, I've seen it occur. So I know when a person is nervous about telling me certain things about them because I've seen what it looks like. So like now when these people are talking about, well, we were slaves. Well, if you're paying a person sub minimum wage and you're still forcing them to do a job, isn't that the same thing? Same thing. Same thing. Just a different day. You know, we don't call it sharecropping anymore. When mm -hmm. you don't pay, pay people fair market value mm -hmm. for the stuff that they prove for, produce and sell on the open market, mm -hmm. isn't that the same thing? Mm -hmm. Same thing. So, how can you advocate for someone to make life better for them? unless you understand what it looks like, and then you're in a place where you can elevate yourself to the next level. Because see, a lot of people like to lie and tell you that that's not me. I wasn't doing that. They'll sit there, the biggest Christians in the world. They'll read scripture backwards and forwards and tell you this and tell you that. Most of these slave masters call themselves Christians. Yeah. What did you say? Mm -hmm. I don't see any Jesus in them. Mm -hmm. Hypocrisy is hypocrisy. I don't care who it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to watch some of these people who run around with these nice red hats on talking about Jesus told me to do it. Well, my Jesus tells me about love. Mm -hmm. I love anybody. I don't pick and choose who I love just because I don't like them. But there are people who call themselves Christian and they besmirch the name because people think Christians act like that. But do they? And that's the part you have to be able to make the difference between. Does that make sense? Because again, you're not wrong. But what you gonna do about it? In today's society. As but, 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 no, but, but you're saying that's the question. 
What you gonna do about it? Well, what should I do? <laughs> okay, so well, I need it, 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 I should it depends on where you are in that particular space. So if you're saying if, if I'm the slave, that's that's a conversation for you and Jesus. How do you know if you're supposed to be Harriet Tubman okay. or if you're just supposed to be the slave that stays there and does what it is? That's you and Jesus. And in today's society, it's a it's still the same. On the job, you are required to obey. Come to work, do your job. But what if you are working for somebody who obnoxious, who low rate you, who cuss you out, talk bad? <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> it's a real thing. We as people, we know better because we have been brought out of bondage and we are no longer up under slave. When it comes to the slave owner that was supposed to be a Christian, he tried to halfway treat the slave right. But you do have slave owners who misuse people. You got people on the job today who mistreat folk. So do we supposed to live humble up under their rule and never say nothing? According to the Constitution, we don't have to. According to God law, we are supposed to live as Christians, but yet we still don't have to obey or abide by their rules and their law. It is a it is a hard and a thin line whether to do or whether not to do. But if we live according to God's word then a lot of that won't really affect us. But if we see one of our brothers or sisters being abused, that's what happened with Moses. Moses saw one of his fellow people being abused and he killed him. So yes, in today's society, it's done a little different. Should we Cut up, or you <laughs> help me. Like I say, Dickinson went through a different era than I did. I look at it and say, Lord knows, I don't see how y'all went through the life y'all had to go through. It hurts me to see Mama and them had to put up with a lot of stuff that we as a generation wouldn't do coming up through the 60s and 70s, even though we were still segregated and, and oppressed and, and, and went through some stuff. Calling your boys, calling your names, calling your words degraded, degraded, scratching you on the head. So we asked, yeah. They used to they used to scratch you on the head. Yeah, 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 yeah. They used to scratch. What's the scratching on the head? You talking about when they give you a pat in your head like your little dog? Yeah, they'll 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 usually they'll you pat you on the head, scratch you on the head, whatever. Ooh, good boy. Yeah, good boy. Uh huh. Grown people. Yeah. You you was one of the good ones. You yeah. The way they say you could be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but yeah, I didn't want to bring it out. But I, I, I was going to say it. It's there. I was going to say it at the end. Because, yeah, because like I said, now Deacon knew straight up what it meant. When we was coming up, a lot of it was somewhat being changed in a, in a sense. A little, little more subtle because of Dr. Martin Luther King and all the changes that were going on. It was more. It was more of the battle and the struggle that was being overturned. So, what was the question again? The question was if if you if you if you was a, if you was a slave, did you have to, and being a Christian, uh -huh. did you have to obey a slave owner, even though if he was unruly, obnoxious, mm -hmm. low down, right, no good. Just a, a good old boy. We call him saltine 
Well, uh, <laughs> we used to call them saltine cookies. Uh, they don't. They don't buy. Uh, but you know, it, it, it is. It is. It is something to deal with coming up when you talk about slaves and workers, even workers today. You know, they 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 call it what they call it now. They bullhorn bullhorns. They have certain ways that they still try to, you have a group of people that still try to use certain language. Back in the slavery days, you had no choice. Yeah. You know, you, because you didn't have a choice. Re repercussion, they you beat know, you down. Yeah, you didn't have a choice. They'll kill you, cut your hand uh, off, cut your feet today, off. today, you have a choice. You have a choice today you know, because you of rules and regulation and laws. Yeah. yeah. And But now the Bible do say, honor the people's, respect the people's that's yeah. above, or over you. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether he's a good boss or mm -hmm. a good person or a mm -hmm. bad person. If he's over you, mm -hmm. you still, according to God's word, you're still supposed to respect him and obey him. Right. And but you today's society, you have a right mm -hmm. and you have the ability mm -hmm. to remove yourself from that. From yep. that. Um, if you don't like that boss man, mm -hmm. you ain't got to worry about anybody whooping you or nothing. You can go no. do another job. Go get you another job. You know. And that's what that's what her question was. When do, you, when, when do you know to do that? Yeah. When do you know to do well, that? Anytime anybody, anytime to in today's society. Yeah. Well, like I said, in slavery, you just more generic because we was because it was written plain. Right. Mm -hmm. In today's society, you know, in slavery, you had no choice. Yeah. Slavery you had no now, choice. Now you you nowadays know. it's different because, like I said, you can you can quit the job today if you don't. Somebody could say something to you wrong today, you can go get another job. Mm -hmm. You know. But like I say, as Christians. If we live a Christian life, if we live like Christ, we will humble ourselves. And a lot of things, it'll be like water on a duck back. It just roll off. I because like myself. He treated me wrong. I agree. I, listen. I don't think God meant for you to humble yourself. No, he didn't. And 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 listen to me and listen to me good. As long as the spirit is guiding me. Yeah. Pastor Neil can stay there. But I tell people in a minute, I ain't in the spirit right now. <laughs> you on your own. I have <laughs> listen, you got that lady right there. Because whenever, <laughs> whenever, <laughs> whenever stuff didn't start happening, I let her know. I have been on the job and I tell, I don't care who it is. I'm not in the spirit right now. You dealing with Freddie. Now, I got a line and I draw the line in the sand. And it's on you. I ain't no fighter. I ain't no cusser like Peter. But, you know, we all got a breaking point to where as we understand that the devil will try you. Oh, yeah. And he sent people your way. But yet we, as Christians, here, Peter, and it's it's it, like I said, it's amazing how Peter, loudmouth Peter, could sit here and tell you how to act when he didn't always act that way. Because he knows he knows how you're supposed to act, but he didn't act that way. Yeah, he knows. So, as a slave, and and I pray, I hope that we answer her question, and even if we answered it, if she ever crossed that point, if she ever crossed that line, you know. First thing. First thing you pray. Because, like I say, Deke is a little older than any of us in here. They put up with a lot of stuff that we didn't have to put up with, a lot of stuff that we wouldn't put up with. It used to, like I say, it used to be a day and time. If you said that in word, I don't care what color you are, you got a punch in the mouth. Mm -hmm. It was a fight. Mm -hmm. But they went through the struggle. As it always said, Herod sit so we can stand. Obama ran so we can help me somebody. Obama ran so that we could. I forget how it go, but somebody went through the struggle. Yeah, somebody went through the struggle 
in order for us to have a better day. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Cause I, I heard, I heard it. Yeah. Was the march when they went through struggle? Went through the struggle that we might have better day. Exactly. Uh, senator that just passed what was a year or two ago from Atlanta. Uh, short black guy. Yeah, the also. John Lewis. Thank you, John Lewis. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, John Lewis. You know, they went through the struggle. They got beat down. Oh, yeah, spit on. Spit on. Dogs attacking. You know, guns and stuff. So they went through the struggle so we could have a better day. And 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 thanks be to God, we as Christians, we still have, have to look to Jesus. We have to look to the Lord as our Savior. Because we we will go through the struggle. We will be, we will be uh, tempted, we'll be tested, and we will be ridiculed. Yeah. Yeah, they're tested. Yeah, Rosa said so Martin could march. Martin yeah. marched so Obama could run. Yeah, that's the way. Obama it ran so our children could. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Cliche was there. Uh, and it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. You know, it's, yeah. Thanks God, you know, thank God if Rose if Rosa had not sit and stood her ground, we'll be still in the back. We'll still be in the back. Yes. Now it's not really. Yeah. And, and, and like I say, but you know what I mean, we will still be in the back for. We're, like yeah, we still long for a long time, time, for a long period of time, we still would have been in the struggle. Because like I said, I, I, I can remember going downtown in Thompson. Had a little cafe right, right in there where, where, where uh, I think it's right there where Ivory is. And then they had one, I think over in what they call the, the quarter. Mama and grandma and them, they used to work at these little restaurants. But we had to go to the back door. Take that little cafe right in there, right in there. Right right right. We had to go in that back door. So they had a little picnic, they had a little table back there. If you wanted to eat, you sit back there in that hot kitchen and eat. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but you got more food back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't realize that, huh? They didn't realize that. I, I, I just want you to be cautious because scriptures like this are the ones that people don't look like us, mm -hmm. that have a little light of melanin. They will use those. They will shades. use that. You supposed to be at the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. You supposed to mm -hmm. be a less person. Mm -hmm. They literally subjugated an entire race of people based on that color scripture. When again, why were we slaves in the first place? And that's why I always ask the question: Okay, well, at this point, it who works. is your master, and why are they your master? Exactly. They brought us over here to work. Yeah. And but, uh, you was, but you, did you volunteer to come? No, we don't volunteer. But they brought us. See, we were out of country. Still yeah. So, and re and reality, whether it's on the job, whether it's like I say, they'll use that they'll use that scripture just to try to keep you in bondage. But in reality and in life, you are a slave to anything that controls you: drinking, smoking, eating, so you whatever whatever position you are. So we have to be careful, and we have to look to God because God is our head. I think uh, if you can go to 2 Peter, 2 Peter 2 and 19, 2 Peter 2 and 19, you turn over, turn over chapter 2, 2 Peter, 2 Peter, the second chapter, verse 19. You, you there? Bro, bro uh, what verse? Second chapter, uh, verse 19. Second chapter, uh, Peter, second chapter. Second Peter, second chapter. Mm -hmm. second, second Peter, second chapter, verse 19. 19, that's, um, while, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption for for who for whom a man is overcome of the same 
if he brought, brought in bone there. So, so in, 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 in reality, whatever got you tied up, you a slave to that. A lot of people are slave to, like I said, alcohol, drugs, many other addictions. So whatever, whatever got you, a lot of things take us away from God. Uh, got you tied down in bondage. Jobs will have you tied down. A lot of people think that they can't live without a certain job. A lot of people think they, they, they got this job and the job can't go without them. So anything that gets you tied up, bonded, it pretty well much is your God. So we have to be careful who we really serve. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on if I can move on. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for, for your question. Because like I said it is, and or I got I got I got I got to this I got to this point, and I couldn't go no farther. Because like I said, it makes it makes you it'll make you search the scripture, it'll make you search, and it it'll, it'll, it'll put you in some kind of way. This being Black History Month and talking about slavery and bondage, you know, it it does really make you. I noticed we don't, it seems like they don't talk about black history as much. You don't hear that much. I hear it on the radio. You hear one or two. But uh, then like you say about uh, Declaration of Independence, he brought that up. Same what you just said. Mm -hmm. they, they, they talk about that. The one on the dollar bill, the one on two dollar bill, they were slaves. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of them. Have all South Carolina. Strong thumb. Strong thumb. Well known. Yeah. 98 years old. He had a black dog. And yeah. won that knowledge. He did a knowledge. I think finally, but for years, wouldn't that knowledge. Many of them, many of them. And if you ever noticed, it was always they wanted, they wanted to sleep with our women. But they didn't want. They don't want it the other way. You hear stories and no stories right here in Lincoln where people, if you if you look at <laughs> if you look at a woman, you got the lead town. Yeah, you can sleep with her, but you can't eat with her. Mm. <laughs> but you know what? But ain't it ironic that I guess that's the right word. I don't use too many big words. That was a big one. <laughs> 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 I just got it around Monica. Well, but anyway, anyway, it's ironic how you know when you go back in the days when we wasn't allowed a black young black man wasn't allowed to look at a exactly. white woman, mm -hmm. but yet and still in today's society, our wealthy majority, of our wealthy black guys look what they got hanging on their arm. Yeah, it's a white woman. Yeah, yeah. You know, me being old school. I dated one white girl in my life, mm -hmm. and that was it. And it just, I mean, I'm not prejudiced. I am yeah, a little I, prejudiced. I, I think it goes back to the next question is, what happens is when we, you lose your self, self, sense of identity, you use other people's standards as yeah. to why you make choices. Yeah. And so sometimes, even though, it, you know, I'm not saying that a person doesn't love someone else, but if I was taught that this was the best thing I could have, when I get to that next level, I want the best. And unfortunately, we as a people have been pushed down so much that we don't respect each other enough to think that we are the best that is there to offer. You're not looking for a person just because, you know, we talk about looking at a person for the content of their character. Well, let's be realistic. How many people are looking for content of the character when the first thing that they do is see? And a person has been beaten down in the grain to think that this is what looks best. I mean, because even think about to how some of the people who how you choose. You know, some of us prefer pers persons that are dark, darker complexion. Mm -hmm. But some folks they won't date yeah. they they anybody mm -hmm. who is 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 is, is um is darker tea. than a paper bag. Yeah. There used to be a paper bag yeah. for the skin color, even amongst mm -hmm. people that are here. Because I look through, and I, and I want people to pay really close attention to the to the complexion of folks coming from Athlon, 
up here to Lincolnton. Ooh. It's a bunch of folks been mixed up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A bunch yeah. of them. Because yeah. 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 they wanted that baby, make sure that babies had that nice pretty still count. Yeah. 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 And yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it gets to the point where yeah. we as Christians have to get to a place yeah. where it's not about what I see but what God has put in me. And I'm not sure if all of us are ready to get to that level because I don't appreciate me yet. Mm. And you got to first appreciate yourself. I got to appreciate me, even as I color, because our people are so beautiful. Yeah, They're so powerful, but how many of us acknowledge that? Mm -hmm. So when when you see a person of color, do you think that they're the smartest person in the world? If you in a room and it's a white man walking and it's a black person sitting there, who do you think is the best educated, has the most money, and is the the the, the better person? What's the automatically assumption? The white man. But is it always true? No. It's not Around true. here, nine times out of ten, it's not. Mm-hmm. But you make that assumption because we still believe. And, and we got to get past that. Yeah. Always, always, if you talk to a person, just just let them talk. Listen. They ain't as smart as they they claim to be. Okay. Just listen. You ain't got to say a word. Just listen to him. Verse 17 says, honor all men. And that's the key part to it. We're supposed to treat one another with respect. Aretha said that best. And, 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 and if you didn't think Aretha was smart, she spelled it out for you. <laughs> R-E-S. <laughs> yes, she did. Spelled it out for you. If everybody will honor one another, matter not what position, matter not what color of your skin, even if you are in charge, we're supposed to treat each and every one as though we are all children of God. Because we all was made from the image of God. Amen, somebody. And if you if you ever get, if you can't do that honoring everybody, like I said, if you can't respect one another. Matter of fact, you know, we always say you ought to treat people like you want to be treated. You know, I, I often wonder about that sometimes because a lot of people, she just said, a lot of people don't know how to even treat themselves. So they definitely don't know how to treat somebody else. So we're supposed to honor all men. No matter what position they're in, we're supposed to honor and respect everybody. Love the brotherhood. Church folks all love one another. Christians all love one another. What the world need now. Lord have mercy. This world is so divided. Matter of fact, it ain't it ain't divided. It ain't never it ain't never been but one. It's only been what one sided? Always been. All been one, always been one sided. You know, it's always been that way. But let me say something. You just say what you just say at the end. The world is divided. You know, the world is divided. The world don't know no better. Mm-hmm. But look at the church. The church is divided. I was <laughs> just listening. As a matter of fact, I listened to Dr. King. I listened to a couple of his speeches. Yeah, his last love. speech this week. Yeah. Matter of fact, that one I played three times. Yeah, I think love. it was his last. It was the one in Memphis. Yeah, yeah. And I listened to it three times. And, uh, and in his speech, he said, the most race-segregated time a uh, week or the week Sunday. is on Sunday morning. Now he talking about Christian now. Yeah. He's talking about church. Yeah. Call them church, church. I, I've been, how many times I said that? How many times I have Sunday morning? How many times have I said that here in Lincoln, Georgia? Mm-hmm. And here it is 2023. And it's still that way. How many times I got to say it again? I can't understand why we got 60 black churches <laughs> in a in a county in a town only got 20 people. You got 60 churches and you got 20 people. Do the math. It don't add up. Separate. Who separates? God's going to do the separating. He's going to separate the sheep. Yes, yeah, he's going to, he's separated. But but why can't why we? Like, yeah, why, why? And, and the more. Say you won't, nobody don't want to listen. Don't nobody want to listen. Ain't nobody here. Everybody want to do their own thing. Be cheap. Nobody don't want to yeah. listen. I still see it. And everybody want to be in charge. When it, whenever, whenever it goes to, whenever it comes to, well, okay, if we come together, and and there's the order, there's an order in order to go through, in order to choose 
who will lead. Oh, yeah. Here's the, here's the road map right here. God chose Moses. God told Moses. Matter of fact, God chose Moses, but Moses' father-in-law said, hey, <laughs> Moses, I know, I know God said, you, you're a bad boy, but you can't do it all by yourself. He told him to break, break them up, break them down in hundreds, break them up in hundreds and fifties, and, and, and then you put people over. It, it's as simple as it is to do. All you got to do is follow the word of God. So what happened if we build one church that'll fit? Whether it's six, seven, eight thousand people in Lincoln, or we can just start with ourselves. Why don't we just start with ourselves? Charity start at home. Why don't we just build a church for ourselves and get our people together? Somebody said, well, what are we going to do with all the black churches we got here? Use them as burial grounds. You got the church here. So you still, you know, and, and everybody always talk about the tribes, the tribes of Benjamin, the tribes of, you know, the 12 tribes. So if you, even if you break it down in, in, in accordance to tribe, you still have tabernacle people being buried on tabernacle. You still have one here at Harmony. Half of them over at first about to be buried here anyway, you know, because I say you don't have the burial ground. It can be done, but like I say everybody want to be in charge. I'm going to move on. Okay, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. We'll... No, no, no. We we here to study. Trust me, because I don't I I I I do line by line, precept by precept. Y'all know me when we study, we study. And it's not all it's, it's not that I have all the answers. We're here to learn if we don't, just like Sister Grill said, Sister Mia tell me all the time. Just <laughs> Google it. <laughs> 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 we'll look it up. Ask this, this, ask, ask T. Pastor, Pastor, what, what about this? And Pastor say, well, yeah, this is this is that, but let me get that with you. I'll give you the definite answer. She'll call me, she'll text me. And, and, and <laughs> hope, 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 hope get on your hope get on your nerve. Hold on, let me call Pastor Burke because I'm finna go. <laughs> <laughs> now your question. <laughs> your question. So, so I guess ever since I've been coming to Bible study, a lot of things have been coming full circle. <laughs> so I've had somebody ask me, or we had a conversation. He said, "Well, why is there so many different churches?" Mm -hmm. And my argument was, I just feel like people learn different ways. I mean, because about because he was saying the Bible is the same. It's all it's all the same. They're preaching the same thing. Mm -hmm. My argument was, mm -hmm. I feel like I can't I learn from that. different people. I can't answer that question of the why the church is important. Okay. Remember, like this this church, what year it was? Eighteen seventy four. Mm -hmm. The anniversary we're gonna have in March. When the church was built, do you have a car? In eighteen seventy four, mm -hmm. when this church was built, did they have a car? Yeah, so what happened is these churches were built in these neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Farm, um, they were farming. So they they were brought, so because people they they had to walk to church. Mm -hmm. And so and the reason, was school. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were they were school. Churches school. Have that go with them yeah. because they serve the community service. So uh, what happens is when we get to fast forward today, because no one knew the historical reason for it being here you're not addressing the right argument. See what pastor is saying, okay, that's what happened in 1874 because that was then the need. Well, not all of us have a call. So we're now dividing funds between all of the different churches. But the reason why they're there is because at that time, okay, I had the different places. Now, your argument is not a bad argument in that some people do learn differently. Mm -hmm. which is why you have 75 denominations because mm -hmm. this person couldn't agree with this one and this mm -hmm. one couldn't go agree with different. But there has to come a point when, like they had the Fifth Sunday Union, mm -hmm. when our people have to be able to get back together because if we're not all on the same accord when we go out to teach and you have those conversations with some random person you meet, Christians should be like-minded people. Yeah. So we should be at the same place. Yeah. So I, I would redirect the question to, well, when 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 do you want to join me? And I join you. 
Because I, when those people always say that, they never come visit. Yeah, never do. <laughs> and there's no father, there's no father from her <laughs> to you, to you, to her. Right, that was too. Yeah. Yeah, We did. But, uh, uh, that was a right transition. Back to have yes. mm -hmm. Everybody, you went right. to that church. Yeah. church. And church would be full. Yeah. You know, you went to first Baptist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When they are uh, like Luke 30 something, yeah. if I went to Saint Luke, you know what I mean, like that. And then, like I said, by this neighborhood, see so your boomer's mama, she didn't go, yeah, she didn't go that school, up, right? Uh, like her uh, aunt and all that. See, we was in the neighborhood. They were over there on the what? On uh, Lewis Crook Road. Mm -hmm. All of them come to church here. Mm -hmm. Tom, Sims was all in the neighborhood. Cubs was all in the neighborhood. Yeah, Cox, Tuckers was all right in the, in the area. Neighbor, back, back in the day, when my mama and them would come on and say, he said, but I walked to church. We well, we, back in the day, we walked to church. Like Allen and all them, all that way over, way over there on Lewis Road. Mm -hmm. They sleeping all them. They walked to church from there all over here. So that's why. So you look at it now, sir. I'm a long way to walk. Yeah. Back in the day, now. It wasn't no long way, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, to them, you know, it was. But don't confuse that with what's here, because mm -hmm. what we just talked about, they don't have nothing to do with this Bible. No, all of that was how people dealt with the situation yeah. in their time period. You didn't have that, like I said, they had no cause. They, they, had had no cause. they did the best that they could do. Did what they thought was best. See, like this church, this church was donated by a white couple. Mm -hmm. They like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a, a, a lot of them were. Yeah. A lot of them work. So we are to love the brotherhood. And, and as I say, if the brotherhood will love, then we all can get together. But like I said, we are we are too divided within our own body. But you know, but today now, the reason back then, like Willie James say, because it was the convenience. Mm -hmm. and what, but to today, in today's society, it's totally different. It's, it's, it's totally God different. God has blessed us today yeah, that we don't have no excuse. It's you know, back in the 80s and early 90s, mm -hmm. a lot of churches was breaking up simply because of people's ego. You know, I remember some pastors didn't even want their members socialize with other people from another church. They still ain't members. So, you know, it was well, just that's true. Today, there's a church on every corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. every. And, and, they not. And, they, but, and they got a different View on a lot of the scripture. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, if you go to the predominant, I've been to quite a few predominant white churches. Mm -hmm. Into it's a big difference. Yeah. It's a big difference. They interpret a lot in this Bible different from the way we do. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just a fact. Yeah. But that don't make that that don't, that don't mean they're smarter than we are. No, don't. That don't mean that they know the word. No, I mean, like I said, the Bible tells us tell to study it to show you. And like I said. All you got to do is read God's word. That's why they sit. And, and like I said, I, 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 I was trying to remember. Have I been to one of their Bible study or the Sunday school? But they sit quiet and still. They, they don't say nothing. But we get excited. Yeah. So it is a difference. Scripture goes on to say, you know, if we love, we love the brotherhood. We should love Christian, whether no matter what color they are. Fear God. And, 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 and we can stop right there because like I said, people, people don't have God no more. Talking about fearing him or respecting him, no, honor him. They don't fear God. They don't fear God at all. A lot of people don't even know God. Don't want to get to know God. A lot of people think that they are their own. They think they got where they are on their own. So we need to get back to the basics and respect and reverence God. And honor, they say, it says honor the king, whether whoever in position, like I said, we just gotta respect one another. But we gotta realize and, and know that God is king of king and Lord of Lord. He's above all. Verse 18, 
it, like I said, deal with the example of Christ's suffering. And my, like I said, my time is running out. Uh, I really enjoyed the enjoyed the history portion of it. This being Black history, you know, it is you know, if we remember where we came from, the struggle we went through to get where we are, but yet learn to do better and serve God better and come together and love one another. We'll be, a, we'll be in a better place. Servant, be subject to your masters with all fear. And, and like I say, a lot of people will use that verse to say slavery is right and is according to the Bible. That's not what Peter meant. Peter, like, like she just stated, Peter was saying it back in the slavery days, if you was a slave, then you are just like we are today. When you go on your job, you should clock in on time. Somebody say amen. amen. When you go to break, you got a 10 minute break, you should take a 10 minute break. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't supposed to do like some of our people do. Show up when they want to show up. Take a 30 minute break when they only supposed to take 10. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It cost a lot of bit of but doing a little bit more, uh -huh. you know. And uh, you had to run production. Mm -hmm. This guy said, "Now, how you think we go do all this, you uh, know, and get the production going?" He said, "You cut down on your breaks." You do all of them. Don't take no ten. <laughs> it take you ten minutes just to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It take you ten minutes just to get there. He couldn't say nothing because he knew what he was doing. But just like I said, you have to all the people so you know who made it in charge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 verse verse eighteen is where we where we just got through. Servant, be subject. To your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Like I say, even if you got a good, you got a good supervisor, you're supposed to respect them. If you got a low down one, it's a way to handle and deal with it because you are not under their bondage. You're up under God. God is our head. And we've been freed from sin because of what Jesus did on the, on the cross. So if we live an honorable life, if we live a Christian life, we don't have to worry about it. Like I say, if, 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 your, if your boss called a meeting and said, hey, they're like D said, hey, too many of y'all been taking 30 minute breaks. You only got 10 minute break, we cutting down on them. Well, in that case, if you only been taking 10 minutes, even if you were taking 15, he ain't talking to you. So you really don't have to worry about it. You just keep on doing the right thing. Take your 10 minute break, go back to work. And that's what, that's basically the way it is dealing with. Peter was saying that a certain light complexion, people got the rule, the darker complexion. He wasn't saying that. He was just giving them the basic guideline how people are supposed to act. Basic, that's all it is. But this is thankworthy if a man for conscious toward God and do agree. Now, like I say, if you have to put up with somebody else wrong for God's sake, then it's an honorable thing to do. God will heap coal over their head. But I'm gonna stand up on this one. <laughs> because you know, in today's society, it's hard. It's real hard. You have to do a lot of praying. You really have to do a lot of praying because, like I said, some folks will take your kindness for granted. They'll take it for weakness. They'll take your humility as weakness. And as long as you let them. They'll keep on riding. And I'm through. Dr. Martin Luther King said it at this. A man can't ride you unless you bend over. <laughs> I ain't bending over. <laughs> I, I can't do it. I, I mean, 
Like I said, you, you, anybody, any of us, you know, they can say stuff and do stuff out of, out of the blue and you're not paying attention to it. But don't let it, don't let it come full circle. What? I always tell the story about how the preacher say he, he taught the Reverend, Reverend Wright. And Reverend Wright told him, said, him, 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 well, the, the, the fellow that the fellow that was 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 talking, he was a mean fellow. He then he get fight with, with with another guy, and Reverend Wright, C for the CP CP Wright, CP Wright told him, said, "Listen, they don't don't need two fools in the room. One you know, room ain't big enough for two fools." And he, he, he thought about that thing. Conversation ended. The preacher walked away. He just called me a fool. <laughs> <laughs> and I let him get away with it. I did that same thing one day. Fellow acting up, cutting up, and I, I told him, I said, and I said, I said, listen, listen. This place ain't big enough for two fools. You can have one if you want. He walked off. Came back real quiet. Wait, I, 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 I want to know now. Did you just call me a fool? You said. <laughs> I did. But now that you're close to me, let me educate you. Start acting like a grown man. I like you got some common sense. Quit all that loud talk. Act like you got the sense that God gave you. So, you know, when people come back to you, then you can minister to them. They don't take all that foolishness. You old enough to whereas you should be teaching the younger generation. You want to act a fool if you want. <laughs> I'm here. So, so you have to you have to educate people and, and teach people along the way. I'm I'm done. I'm through. We'll start at first 19. Servant, be subject to. And like I said, we'll start at verse 20 because, like I said, this is thankful. If a man were conscious toward God, like I said, we're supposed to live like Christians. To honor God, even if we go through suffering, whatever we go through, and it's hard, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big pill to swallow to give up your right for somebody else wrong. Now, if you did something wrong and you got to suffer, that's a different story, amen? Someone give us our closing prayer. Oh, good Father, we thank you for allowing us to give us We thank you, Father, for allowing us to give the opportunity to come out and study your word. We want to thank you for each and every one to come out to listen and study your word. Let's study to show ourselves approved. That's what we're trying to do, Father. Father, we thank you for the one who teaching us the word. Continue the blessing, building them up where he might be strong in your word, and that we might be strong in your word by learning your word, by coming out and explaining the word. And we just thank you for life and well in you. Your name, I pray my Father, Son, and Holy. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless each and every one. Thank you, thank you for coming and thank you. Enjoy, enjoy the interaction. That's what we're here for is to study. If we don't do but one verse, I'm satisfied. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sister Kate is on the Zoom. She waving up and she waving a hand in the air like she just don't care. <laughs> all, all I can see is a hand. <laughs> God bless you. Hey, Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Off my bedtime, Pastor. <laughs>
Yeah, we was told about that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we we kept you past your bedtime. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I always do enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. she's she's in she's in Columbus, South Carolina. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> think about okay. Have a nice. You know, you know I, to me, I ain't no historian, but you know, we had Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. that put our life, really put our life on the line for black people. Mm -hmm. And then in the next era, we had Dr. King. And we had great leaders right. in between. We Every had um, several great leaders, right. but not to the extent of Harris Tubman mm -hmm. and Dr. King. Mm -hmm. To me, that those are two of the most prestige, more, two of the most black leaders that gave, that, that was willing to give their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, do you think we're gonna have another one in our lifetime on that level? God always puts somebody in position. Just like he did David. Yeah. David was a little rutted out in the pastor, tending his right. father's right. sheep. He always got somebody, even when 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 Moses uh told Pharaoh to let God's people go, at some point and sometime. When when God get tired of our foolishness, I think we first got to come together That's for the cause. I think we got to come together for the cause. Right. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't, what's the word I'm looking for? We haven't understood or designed or figured it out. Because see, too many of us, she just said. Too many of us think we have overcome mm -hmm. because we're going out and marrying. It ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, but when we get to a position, we got a little education, got a little money. How many, how many, how many, how many black athletes do you see getting in trouble with uh -huh. women? Yeah. So until we define. Until we define the cause, and maybe the last one, one of the last one that's still living, Reverend Al Shaw, and neither, neither one of them can do it. Al got some of that in him. When you hear him talk, when you hear him talk, he got it in it because he's been through the struggle. But who is it? Or do we have one on the scene that can lead us? Well, if you look at the difference between Al Sharpton and Dr. King or Harry Tuck, in order for someone to lead a group or nation of people like Dr. King, and, and those, I only put those two on the same yeah. level. Yeah. You know, just like you can't put nobody else on the same level with Michael Jordan. Yeah. You can put somebody right close by, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. 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 I, I'm with you on that. But those two, <laughs> those two leaders had was completely sold out to God. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference between them and the other good leaders that we had. Aaron Tupman. But it was the crowd that was different. It wasn't the person. Huh? It was the crowd that's different. It's not the person. See, with Harry Tubman, you got to have somebody behind you. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have somebody. Team, you got to have it behind you. Yeah. What happens is those people are able to mold together people who already had a mind to do it. Right. See, right now, most of us are so fragmented. We're not going to move to do the same thing. You know, you know how much will it takes to have a whole city walk rather than ride a bus for a year and a half. Mm. That's a mm. mindset. That, that that man didn't do it. They had to know that they wanted something different. Mm. And the problem is we can't get us to agree on what color to put the car. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. I mean, yeah. But I'm yeah. the point where all of us are in the same place. I'm not going to make it up in my mind that I'm tired of having the master beat me and follow Harry to tell me anyway. They literally created songs so that Underground Railroad could keep going because everybody realized this has to stop. And he said, and until we all there together, he said, it doesn't matter who comes up. We, the people, the people well, it got to be, I think it got to be, I think it got to be, 
makes sense. But, you know, I, like I said, the other night when I was listening to Dr. King, a lot of stuff, you know, God put a lot of stuff in me sometimes. And, uh, but when I finished for the first time, I realized that I don't really think it's going to be another leader like Dr. King. And because I don't think there's enough time left. You know what I'm saying? No, see, I, 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 this word, this word can't continue. I'm, I'm, it can't continue much longer. When I say much longer, I ain't talking about 20 or 30 years. Nobody knows. Yeah. But what I'm saying, if you know the Bible and you know when God, God gets enough, yeah. when he God gets enough, yeah. but when God sent a leader like Dr. King, I don't care what the people do, yeah. when God sent him and he receives it from God, in other words, come whether I live or whether I die, it ain't every, every leader can't do that. No, I, can't do very, that. I can't do it. Look, look at it this way. You know, look at it this way. Dr. King, well, he knew he was going to die. Okay. Harold Tubman probably figured she was going to die. Every so often, you will have a struggle that will come that will call the people to move. Yeah, true. During that during that time, the struggle, as, as she's pointed out, mm -hmm. it had to be somebody that was was enough to step up. Now, like I said, we gotten too blessed. Mm -hmm. I can use the word. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice, when COVID came, it shut you down. It put you in a place. George Floyd. When 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 George Floyd got killed, it brought people together, and. You're still having little bits and pieces here and there. 9 11, it shut you down and people come together. You needed a person, but yet they disperse once the dust clear. Look at this, this. It was just an earthquake. Yeah. And the people only got together for that long. But yet the people over there are still going through the struggle. You would think the war in Ukraine would have brought people closer. But you got two men I'm scared of one man. So yeah, there need to be somebody. But until God get tired of our foolishness, and like I say, no man know the day or the hour. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you got a bad time. I got. I, 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 that, you know, I, I just wash my hands. You know, boy, look at here. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, yeah. God have to, sometimes God have to turn His people over to the Pharaoh and let them stay in bondage for a while, and then He will send a Moses to say, "Go down there and tell Pharaoh, I see it. Let." My and Reverend Ab Sharpen, I mean, I I respect him. I mean, he, he's he not like that. But he ain't. He ain't it. He ain't it. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't it. But I said, no, no, no. He ain't the one. But like I said, I agree with him. But if you listen to him, oh, he's been. You can tell he's been. But he's not the one. He knows some stuff. He sees some stuff. But he's not the one. I don't really don't think we're going to see another Dr. King, nor Dr. Uh, it might be the only one. I really, I really don't think. Those are, those are unique people. And I can listen to Dr. King. We got Brent Boyce. Okay. He knew he was going to die. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. 